Okay, to start out, make sure you've downloaded Blender OSM Premium. Uh, you could download it in the description down below. Uh, once you have that, go ahead and open it on Windows 10 or whatever operating system you're using, and then you have the zip contents, and let's just go ahead and extract those to the desktop. And once they're extracted, then uh, we're going to want to also extract the assets contents. And it could be any directory that you prefer. All right, uh, now that they're extracted, uh, let's go ahead and open up Blender. We're using version 2.81a. And when you open up Blender, go ahead and click on the edit and then preferences. And then uh, under preferences, you should see add-ons right here and click on add-ons. And then uh, in the search box, you could type OSM and you'll see that it doesn't exist right now. So let's go ahead and click on the install button, navigate to your desktop or wherever the extracted contents are and click on that and then open it. And then now you should see that it's the uh, OS OpenStreetMaps is now an add-on inside our Blender. And uh, if we click on the checkbox and that activates it, and then we got to do some uh, preference setting up. So uh, if we click on the directory to store downloaded OpenStreetMap terrain files, we could just set that to any directory really. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to set it on my desktop. Okay. So that's where our terrain files are going to go. And then uh, we want the directory with the assets that we extracted. So let's go ahead and locate that, which is on my desktop. There it is. Hit accept. Okay, and then now the last thing we need to do is set up the token. So if you click on the get it button, it should bring you to this web page. And uh, if you don't already have a Mapbox account, you're going to have to create one. And once you get in, uh, you could go ahead and click on the create token button and give it a name. We're going to call it Blender OSM. And uh, the default public scopes and secret scopes should be fine. And we don't need to add a URL or anything. So just go ahead and click create token and confirm your password. Okay. And then we should see the token we just created down here under the access tokens. Let's go ahead and copy that by clicking this button. And then if we go back to Blender, we can paste that token directly into here and everything should be working now that you've done that. And so now you can just close out the preferences and it should store that. Okay, uh, so once you've added the add-on, then you can see that there's some items that we don't quite need in our workspace. So uh, if you just go ahead and follow along the keyboard and mouse uh, commands that I have down here, you shouldn't see this in Blender. Uh, this is all for my video recording. Uh, so you can just copy what I do. Uh, so you want to left click and drag, make a selection box and select all the three items currently in our uh, scene. And if you push the delete button on your keyboard, then it should delete everything because uh, we don't need those. And then if you click on this arrow right here, it's going to uh, show you have some options. And uh, if you click on the OSM tab, uh, this is the basically every option that comes with the OSM add-on. Uh, so let's start off by selecting a region. And we also want to make sure that we're importing the terrain to start out with. Okay. And then if you click on the select button, it should uh, bring you to a web page where you can uh, navigate around the world and create selection regions. So uh, for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and do Tokyo and this whole harbor right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that in our screen view and then click on the show selection rectangle. And that will give us a, an area that we can capture. So I'm going to drag it kind of around like this. I think that's pretty much everything I want to capture. And maybe I'll make that a little smaller. Like that. Like that. And that should be good. And uh, if we see over here, it's going to say your area is too large. So um, there, there's like importing issues when you're uh, trying to capture like a lot of buildings. It's just too much data for the server to handle. But uh, for terrain, 
Blender OSM, uh, the Im importing server usually handles that pretty well, so you can do like pretty large areas for terrain. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, copy these coordinates just manually. But when it, when the area is like small enough and it's fine, then uh, it should just give you a copy button to make this process really easy. So uh, we're just going to have to manually do this. So uh, copy that coordinate. And that corresponds to the top coordinate right here. And then let's go ahead and open up that page again. Let's go counterclockwise and just match the coordinates, uh, the coordinate areas with these areas, or text uh, inputs. Okay, and then uh, click on import. Now this should take a few minutes or a few seconds, and uh, if there's any issues with your coordinates, then you should see an error message down here. So uh, you'll know it's finished when you see a terrain uh, orange selected object appear in your scene collection. Okay, uh, once you have control over the layout again, uh, that means your terrain is pretty much finished importing. Uh, you could tell that your terrain has finished if you also see it right here in the scene collection. And uh, you're probably not going to see it in the layout, and that's because we're zoomed in really close. So we could only see like thousands of meters right here, but we need to see like millions of meters uh, all at once. So to change that, uh, if you click on the view tab in the upper right hand corner, then you can see the view end. And let's change that view end to something really large, uh, something like a billion. And uh, now if we start scrolling out, uh, keep scrolling out, keep scrolling out, and you'll eventually see all your terrain. So there's mine. And that's how you know the terrain import is successful. Now that we have our terrain imported, we're going to want to reduce the geometry. Uh, so currently it is really complex and there's lots and lots of calculations that will happen with this, uh, with the future operations we're about to perform on it. So uh, to simplify it, let's go ahead and select it. And we know it's selected when it's orange up here. And then uh, if you look on the right side, you should see a wrench. Click on that. And then uh, we're going to add a modifier, and that's going to be the decimate modifier. And uh, by default, it should be on the collapse tab. And we want to make sure that the ratio is, oh, well, I guess it just depends on the project. But uh, I'm going to try doing something probably around like 0 0.05 uh, for the ratio. And if I click away, uh, it's going to start processing. And we can notice that currently I'm at 9,762,000 uh, faces. And it's just a really large, large uh, computation that it needs to work on real quick. So give it a few seconds. All right, uh, once it's finished, you should have control over Blender again, like this. Uh, and you can see uh, now the current face count is pretty close to a million, so we greatly reduced it. And uh, you just want to make sure you check off this triangulate option right here. Uh, that will help out with uh, future operations you'll do on, on this terrain. And this should also take quite a few seconds. Okay, and once you have control on Blender uh, again, just make sure you apply the, the modifier by pushing apply right here. And this should also take quite a few seconds. Currently, it has been taking me about um, like three minutes to, to do this size of the landscape, but it should vary based on your project. And finally, once you've finished applying your modifier, Go ahead and save your project so far. All right, now that we've simplified the terrain, let's go ahead and level out this ocean. Uh, so we can see that the OpenStreetMaps captures like the depths of the ocean. And uh, if we look closely around the mountains, uh, there's it's a little choppy and a little like squarish around certain regions. 
So we just want to level all that out so um, it, it'll make the rest of our project look, look pretty good in the future. Uh, so let's go ahead and start out by uh, changing our mode to edit mode in the upper right hand corner by clicking on the drop down and just going to edit mode. Or you could also push tab and that will take you back and forth between modes. And you should see uh, all the vertices are selected by default once you go into edit mode. Uh, so let's just click away and that should deselect everything. It may select one vertice if you click away, but that's all right. Uh, so now let's try to scroll in and uh, find a reference vertex for the ocean height. And what I'm looking for is just the vertex that's like right near um, the, the surface I want everything to come up to. So I'd say probably a pretty good vertex is one like this. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, you just want to find something right along the coast that's like at the the like beach height, I guess. And if you could find like uh, like one of these like square uh, shape areas, then then you know uh, it's a pretty good reference point. So I selected this one, and what I'm going to do now is go ahead and hit the select tab up here. And there should be an option called side of active. So let's click on that. And what it's going to do is select all these active vertices on the X axis by default. So if we look down here in the bottom left hand corner uh, and we click on the drop down arrow, then it should give us more options we could play with right now. And uh, let's go ahead and change the axis to the Z axis. Now it should select everything at a certain height. So that's pretty much our whole landscape. Uh, but that's all the mountains, and we actually want to capture everything down below. So just change the positive axis to the negative axis. And there we go. We've uh, basically captured everything for, for the ocean. Uh, so now let's go ahead and level it out. And to do that, if you push S on your keyboard, that's the resize uh, operation. And uh, if you just click your mouse immediately after you push S, then uh, you will see this, these options down here. And uh, you want to make sure that you keep the scale X1 and then the scale Y1, but change the scale Z to 0. What that, that'll do is just adjust the height for everything on the Z axis to the same exact height. So now we can see everything's like pretty much level. Uh, but now we got to do one more thing. Uh, so we can see that there's like a pretty big drop right around the, the coastlines. So let's just go ahead and bring our um, selected vertices all the way up to that coastline. Now a good way of doing this is if you push 1 on your numpad, that should bring you to a front perspective of all the vertices right now. Another way to do that is if you click on the view up here in the uh, upper toolbar, and then you go to viewport, then you should see these different views. And I, I went with the front one. Uh, so now that you're in the front view, if you look up a little bit, uh, you can see here's all the edges and uh, faces and the vertices are pretty far apart. So we just want to bring these vertices up to, up to the like baseline of all the other vertices. So to do that, uh, if you push G on your keyboard, this is going to move all the vertices, and you just move your mouse up really close to the other vertices. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, as close as you can get it is better. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit more just to bring it a little closer. And uh, you want to make sure that in the move options down here, uh, that everything stays pretty close to uh, zero on the X and Y axis. But the Z axis, of course, is going to be uh, a bit different. It's going to be whatever numbers uh, relative to the amount of change you want to do. Okay, uh, so now everything should be pretty level around the coastlines. And so we could go back to object mode 
and then we should see that uh, everything looks pretty smooth. Just like that. All right, now that you've finished uh, leveling out your ocean, let's go ahead and move the height of the, the terrain to pretty much right next to the origin down here. Uh, so we can see there's like just a pretty big gap and uh, that's just because our ocean depths that we've captured earlier. So uh, again, let's go to a front perspective and I'm going to push the one on my numpad to do that. And uh, I'm going to zoom in quite a bit near so I can see the origin and the land. And I'm going to click on the land and then I'm going to go ahead and select this, uh, this move uh, arrow uh, direct manipulation tool so I can start dragging this terrain down. So I'm just going to pull it all the way down really close to this red line. And uh, probably another thing that will help you out at this point is if you push the magnet tool, the snap up here, uh, it should look like a magnet, uh, that will allow you to start snapping vertices to uh, certain uh, grid positions if, uh, if they're close enough. So let me zoom in a little bit closer. Let me grab my arrow, which is now way down there. And we can see the snap just kind of goes right past that red line. So uh, maybe we want to undo the snap for now. I'm just going to bring that really close. And then uh, you're going to go up here in this upper left hand toolbar and then select uh, object or just hover your mouse over object and then hit apply or hover your mouse over apply and then click on location. So right now that will uh, reset the, the arrow uh, modifier directly back to the origin and uh, that now this is like the local reference point for, for this object. So I'm going to go ahead and keep pulling it down and just get it real close. And I'm just going to zoom in a whole lot uh, just for accuracy purposes. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now, um, we can see right now the terrain just looks a little weird from this, this perspective. And that's because in our view, uh, we have our clip start at 0.1 meters. So let's go ahead and uh, just change it to 1 meter. Oh, that actually doesn't fix anything. Uh, well, later on, uh, the clip start at one meter will will really help out your uh, your view perspective. Um, one other thing we should do real quick is uh, with the front perspective. Let's go ahead and uh, set the terrain. Let, let's apply it again at this height. So I'm going to go object, apply location. And then uh, if I click over here on the item tab, I want to move up the terrain just two meters. Now the reason I'm doing that is uh, so that right around uh, the docks and the, the terrain, uh, th there's at least like a little, little lip that um, everything could collide with and uh, you can see it from a ship's perspective. Probably just one meter is okay too. Yeah, I just you just want to kind of think like uh, if most of the the coast coastal surface is going to be like a concrete uh, barrier essentially from the ship's perspective. So uh, yeah, just set it to one meter. That should be good. One meter above from that origin, and uh, we could just go ahead and finalize everything by doing that apply location one last time. All right. All right, now we're going to want to import the coastlines. And to do this, uh, it's going to enable us to cut out the ocean from the terrain. And it's going to give us finer details around the coast. And uh, we're going to want to open up the OSM add-on. And then make sure you're on the OpenStreetMap tab. And then with your import settings, make sure there is no terrain selected here. Uh, it should just be blank like that. And then you want to be on 3D Simple and then make sure Import Water Objects is selected and nothing else should be selected. And then your settings below here should match mine uh, just by default. Uh, so go ahead and click on the Select tab. 
And uh, if you've had your uh, terrain uh, selection window open from earlier, then you could just reference this. Uh, so this is the size of the terrain we captured, uh, but we, we want to capture smaller areas for this. And uh, you know the area is good enough when you see this, your area is too large, warning, go away. So I'm going to go down to something kind of like that. And uh, it doesn't matter if these regions are like overlapping in, in different ways, because uh, we could just merge everything together later on. Uh, so now that we see the areas, there's no warning sign right here. Let's just go ahead and click on the copy and it will copy it to our clipboard. And then we can paste it in to Blender, just like that. And you should see these coordinates change. And then just go ahead and click import. The import should take about 30 seconds to a minute. Once the import finishes, you should see uh, now there is a black outline over the terrain. And uh, you'll see there's like some blue shapes in here, which are like internal smaller bodies of water that we don't quite need and like rivers and stuff like that. So uh, that's the water right here and we could go ahead and delete that just by right clicking and deleting it. Now let's go ahead and cut away the terrain from the coastlines. And to do that, we need to make the coastline a solid object. Uh, so let's start out by hiding the terrain. So you just hide it uh, by pushing the eyeball in the upper right hand corner. And then you want to do a top-down view on the coastline by pushing 7 on the numpad, or you can also go under View, Viewport, and Top. And uh, we want to go to Edit Mode, so select the, the coastline and either push Tab on your keyboard or go down to the Edit Mode. And now you see that this whole uh, coastline is an open object up here. So let's go ahead and fill it fill it in. So I'm going to go ahead and select the furthest uh, vertice with no second uh, connection. And I'm going to extrude it up. Uh, I have my magnet snap uh, selected so I can uh, go along the axis without having to worry about uh, weird angles. It doesn't have to be perfect either. It could uh, it could each piece could overlap quite a bit. Uh, so I extruded that up, and now I'm going to find the other open vertice, which is this one, and then I'm going to connect it by holding shift and selecting both of them, and then pushing F on the keyboard, and that should fill in an edge right there. So now there's another issue with this, and that is uh, if I do Control L, that will select the link, the linked vertices, and we can see these uh, vertices and edges are connected. Uh, but the whole outline isn't connected. So it's a bunch of individual groups that are connected, but the whole thing isn't. So to fix that, uh, what we'll do, uh, you want to make sure you do these next few steps in order every time. Uh, and what we'll do is select everything by pushing A on the keyboard, or you could do select all, and then click on uh, the mesh tab up here. And you're going to want to do a cleanup merge by distance. Now what I found works pretty well, these these numbers may be different based on your project, but uh, merge by distance with 0 0.01 meters works pretty good. So once that's finished, you should see uh, removed uh, a certain amount of vertices down here. And uh, so that's pretty much finished once you click away and that dialog goes away. And now uh, we want to fill in this area and you could do that by uh, well, before I fill in, I just want to show if you do select the vertice and then control L. Now everything's connected now that we've merged by distance. And uh, even these outlines out here on these little islands are also merged. So everything is pretty much connected in loops. So now uh, if you select everything and then push F on your keyboard, that should fill in the whole area, and you'll see it shades in like that. And then now we want to do one other thing.
which is uh, we'll do a cleanup and then a degenerate dissolve. And what this will do will uh, enable us to simplify this terrain quite a bit, because uh, right now there's just way too many vertices for our future steps. So uh, if we degenerate dissolve in edit mode right now, then uh, our future operations should work out fine. It may take a few seconds. Okay, so once uh, it finishes loading, uh, the merge distance I've been using is around like 5 to 10 meters. Uh, it just really depends on your project. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of hard to test right now if this is the right number, but uh, just, just go with something kind of like big. And uh, you should be able to see around your uh, terrain that certain objects kind of like go away and uh, get destroyed or just like simplified in certain areas. Um, just for our purposes, that, that level of detail just isn't too important. Okay, so now that that's all finished, uh, let's go back into, or before we go back into uh, object mode, let's go ahead and do a quick cleanup on this. Uh, so if we go to mesh, cleanup, there's a delete loose option. And that will just delete any extra edges or vertices that are not quite connected to any faces or anything. So now that that's finished, let's go back to object mode. And I'm right now in x-ray view. Uh, you could toggle that up here so you can see uh, through objects. So uh, let's go ahead and solidify this object. And you could do that by going to the wrench down here, the modifiers. And then you want to add a modifier, which will be the solidify one. And then I usually do a thickness of 2000. The thickness just has to be greater than the height of the terrain. Uh, and it could be like way bigger. It doesn't really matter too much. And then I set the next property, uh, the offset to zero. So that way it goes like halfway in between. The terrain goes halfway in between the, the shape we've created. And now we can successfully cut away the terrain from, from uh, this shape. So I'm going to apply that modifier. I'm going to add another modifier, which is the Boolean. And then you're going to want to do the intersect operation and then select the terrain object. All right, and now if I hide the terrain, you should see we have a cutout of just that one individual section. So that's exactly what we need. Now let's just go ahead and apply that operation. And now you could do the same steps for the rest of the whole uh, terrain. Now, if you try to do that Boolean operation, the intersect with the terrain, and it doesn't look like this, and you're missing like maybe you only have the like islands we're able to cut out and not the like main part. If you're having issues with that whole intersect, then that means your your uh, geometry is just too complex, or there's some gaps in there. I mean, there's various sources of uh, errors that could actually happen within that Boolean operation. So you just want to go ahead and uh, go back a few steps and uh, maybe even restart from the import and just make sure that you follow uh, the instructions I provided uh, pretty closely and then uh, play with your numbers a little bit and maybe make things a bit more uh, simplified. Uh, that's my suggestions at this point in the, the process. I've had uh, quite a bit of issues, but hopefully you could bypass that. Now what we're going to do is import the buildings onto the terrain. And to do that, you will go into the OpenStreetMap tab and make sure you are on the 3D simple. And then check the import buildings, but not the water objects. Just have it like that. And the settings should remain the same. 
And then uh, for the terrain, we don't want to actually use the terrain, otherwise uh, this this might crash and leave your blender into a deadlock. Uh, so go up to OpenStreetMap Coastlines, and um, the Coastlines is just this cutout that we've used, and this is far simpler, and uh, hopefully the buildings will, will project within a reasonable amount of time onto it. So then once you've selected that, uh, just go ahead and click Import and give it a few minutes. This process should take maybe like three to five minutes. Okay, and uh, once the import has finished for the buildings, you should see it look something like this. Uh, the, the buildings should be orange, uh, just that's the way they show up uh, without any textures or anything. We could do the textures later on. And uh, you'll see there's a envelope uh, within this object right here, and we don't need that, so let's just go ahead and delete that, and uh, let's do some organization now that we're complete with this, uh, this step of the process. Uh, so go to the buildings, and just uh, select that, and then uh, open up the object properties, and you can rename it here. I'm going to do buildings, maybe buildings one, because there's going to be a few of them, and then coastlines. Uh, let's just smash that with the buildings, just like that, and we can put them all inside the collection. So now we're pretty much finished with this little area, and we can move on to the rest of the areas. Okay, now that we've finished uh, creating these different sections of land and buildings, uh, let's go ahead and start merging everything together. Uh, so how we'll do this is we will start out with the terrain. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and select all the terrain objects, uh, which is now renamed as the coastlines over here. And then uh, you want to go to Object and look for Join. And if you click join, then it will merge them all together, just like that. And uh, if you actually noticed, I'm going to undo that real quick. Uh, you may have some uh, terrain objects kind of like overlapping, like right over here. And you can fix this by going into edit mode and do a box select by pushing B on your keyboard. And you could draw. Uh, a box area and just probably go over it like this because it's just going to be overlap 
and uh, delete all the vertices. Oh, another thing. Uh, undo that with Control Z. Uh, if you click on the X-ray mode, then you'll be able to select all the vertices uh, behind behind other vertices. So that way, uh, you can select everything in this area. So yeah, just go ahead and do that and delete, and that should be good. So now go back to object mode. Everything looks all right. Uh, let's toggle off X-ray again. Now we have that. Great. Uh, so yeah, let's go and merge everything by s clicking and selecting all these, those lines, and go to Object, Join, or Control J. And now that's all merged together, and now we'll do the same for the buildings. So select all the buildings, go Object, uh, Join, and this one may take a while. All right. Now once that's all finished, just go ahead and save it so far. And you could go ahead and rename your buildings and coastline. Now since we just merged all the terrain and buildings, there's probably some overlapping geometry. So we could fix that by going and selecting the, the terrain, essentially. I rename this to terrain now. Oh, now there's two trains. Uh, I'm going to delete the old one. And I'm going to select this and rename it to Terrain. Now, uh, yeah, select it and then go into Edit Mode. And if you do Control-A, uh, that will select everything. And then you just want to do a Cleanup and Merge by Distance. And uh, let's go ahead and merge. Yeah, anything within 0 0.01 meters should be fine. And when I click away, you can see I'm actually deleting 29,000 vertices. So yeah, that's a pretty important step. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and do that. And now your whole object should be a little more faster. Okay, uh, go back to object mode, and let's go ahead and do the same thing for the buildings. So select the buildings, uh, go into object, or you want to go into edit mode by either pushing tab or selecting in the upper left-hand corner. Since this model is pretty large, uh, it's a little slow for me, so I'm going to select everything. And then I'm going to go to mesh. Clean up, merge by distance. Okay, and if I click away, uh, it didn't tell me how many vertices are removed, but I'm pretty sure it removed quite a bit. Uh, so I could select everything and I could try doing that one more time just to be safe. Okay, now that we've done that twice, I'm pretty sure it's okay. Uh, let's go back to object mode, and let's go ahead and save our progress at this point. Now what we want to do uh, is add a little bit of volume to the terrain 
And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to pull down the, the edges of the terrain just a little bit. So uh, that way, uh, if we're using radar or something, it could just collide with the coastal surfaces. Uh, so let's go into, let's select the terrain and go into edit mode. And then you're going to want to do uh, select everything by select uh, and A. By pushing A on the keyboard, and then uh, go to select loops, and then do select boundary loop, and uh, you should see something kind of like this. And then you're going to want to go and look from a front perspective by pushing one on your keyboard. And then you're going to extrude down by pushing E on your keyboard and then pulling your mouse down, just like that. And it might offset a little bit like that, so just go ahead and change the Z axis to zero. Or not Z, sorry, X axis to zero. The Y axis should be also zero. And Z should be something pretty large. Uh, so now we've basically just mirrored the border uh, down. And it's still a bit uh, hilly, so let's just go ahead and flatten that out by pushing S on our keyboard to resize it. And we're just going to click without moving our mouse around. And then go to the Z axis and change that to zero scale. Okay, and uh, you should see when you click away, it, it'll it all update to a flat uh, surface. So now we want to move this back up really close to that red line. Uh, which is the Z and uh, Y axis. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it and pull it up, and it might be a little laggy. Just like that. Zoom in. Okay. Zoom in pretty close, and then I'm going to grab it and pull it back down. Just like that. OK. Now that we've done that, uh, now there should be a little bit of a, a lip around all the terrain that uh, radars could collide with. Let's go back to object mode. Yeah, now you can see there's a bit of a coastal surface now around everything.